Hey guys, and welcome to another Friday episode of Spread the Magic. To get today's episode started, I decided why not show you guys something that you've already probably seen before. But I thought, you know, everyone loves this. So 99 seconds of Harry Potter will be annotated up there. And if you've already seen this, and if you haven't seen this, click the annotation. So... We can have a sing-along in the comments, possibly. And this is the summer of 2012, which means the Olympics. And this year, Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe will be in a short five-minute video that will be played at the end of events in the Olympics to, I guess, say goodbye to the people that were watching that certain event. So if you go and watch the olympics live you're a lucky person and you get to see these two in a video so be excited because i'm jealous but don't you worry rupert grant will be there as well on july 31st he will be talking about the success of harry potter with the producer david Heyman. so That'll be fun for them. I want to talk about the success of Harry Potter. Here, let's talk about it. Harry Potter is amazing and it's successful. And guess what? Not only is Quidditch going to be in the Olympics this year, but it's time to introduce Leaky Cup, which is Leaky Con's Quidditch game thing that they'll be doing. Which I think is really cool, but you know what makes it cooler? Ivana Lynch will be the one commentating it. And I know you guys are thinking, whoa, didn't Luna commentate Quidditch games in the Harry Potter series? Yes, she did. She did commentate them at a certain point in the series. I wish I could go and watch her commentate and or listen to her commentate, really. So if you're going, I hope you have fun. One of my very favorite actors ever, Matthew Lewis. He has a bunch of awesome projects coming up, and the link will be down there so you can read all about his new projects. And thanks for Snitch Seeker for the um, article that you guys will be reading about him if you click the link, if you're interested in what he will be in because i am because i love him and i'm a creep today deal with it i've decided for this week to have draco as the character of the week and i've tried to shoot this scene like two times already but the first time it ended up being seven minutes and the second time it ended up being nine minutes because i mean draco i feel like he is very complex well not very complex he's more like simple in a complex way. See, I'm rambling already, and that's what's making this video so long. Um, I'm rambling so much, I'm really sorry about that. But I feel like it's really hard to explain him, so I'm gonna try to do it real quick. He is a human, just like us, and I feel like he is one of those few characters who are truly just human in the whole Harry Potter series. And, I mean, a lot, all of them are human, yeah. But he's the one who most of us are truly like. You could say you're a Hermione or a Luna or a Ginny. But so many of us are Dracos and we never noticed that. And no, we don't have to be buttholes. And we don't have to be jerks. And we don't have to be bullies. But I mean, you see him, he was raised that way. And... Uh, how many of you viewers are what you are raised? How many go and do things that you were taught as a child at school or at home? And, I mean, when you think about it, he didn't go to school until he was 11. And most of us, we develop, like, I mean, we learn things in kindergarten that could, that really, I mean, personally, things I've learned in kindergarten, I still use. Because in kindergarten, they teach us a lot about just how to be human. <laughs> well, that's what they taught me. Like, how to function in society, how to be a good person, that stuff. Um, But he, he didn't have anything to teach him that except for his parents, which are Death Eaters, okay? 
I, I could go on on a whole rant about how I think his parents were actually good people, but just the environment he was raised in was, you know, pure bloods are superior. They're amazing. They're the only race that should exist, and all other races should just we should get rid of them. And he's raised to be a jerk, and that's what I mean. All of us. I mean, we're all what we're raised. If we're in a good home, we are good people. Um, a lot of people. I I feel like I don't want to get into the sensitive topic or of people like a lot of people's like home life and stuff because. That can be really rude, and I don't know what you guys are going through, but yeah, he just shows like the a very just simple thing of humanity, which is you know the need for sur survival, because you see that a lot in the Half Blood Prince. He's trying to kill Dumbledore just so he and his family could live, and throughout the whole time, I couldn't help but thinking, does he really want to do this? And I don't know, to me it doesn't seem like he did. And so I wanna I don't wanna make this video long. Um but I don't know, I feel like I just wanted to get the whole point of how Draco really is like probably one of the just more kind of instinctive characters in the book who just want to do things so they can survive in this horrible war um and that's something all of us are like we might not know it because maybe we were you know brought up differently but we're all like him in certain ways maybe if it is different than he is um I hope some of this made sense to you. I know it doesn't make that much sense. Because I'm really trying to go quickly here. So I hope you got something. And yeah. Tell me your thoughts about Draco in the comments if you want. Goodbye for today. I will see you guys on Monday. And I hope you stay well and magical. I, I think that's going to be my thing for now. Hope you stay magical. So, stay magical. Goodbye.